Let's see. How do they finish up the draft? Five Axe. seconds remaining. Axe. Okay. So mid morphling. Safe lane axe. I'm playing the morphling and the axe. Black team in the mid lane. I'll I'll take my own melee here lane and it will be an axe mid. That's an interesting spin on it, and I actually like it a lot. Um, I feel like what they needed was pretty much like a pudge. Puck esque hero. However, the problem with Puck is that it's another very squishy hero. It's another low HP hero, you know. And if he ever gets dueled, it's very easy to kill him. But the axe, that's a very different story, you know. The tone is amazing against the jug. Blade mill, you can turn it against the Legion commander that he hated. Like he has blade mills, you know. Axe with the blade mill is a little bit scarier, especially if like the jug is empowered, the Legion is empowered. Remaining. Blade mill right back in your face, you know. You can kill yourself at a very very fast Five time. So uh, I like that. Axe pickup. It is a little bit of a wild road. It is a, an interesting decision, but Axe with Doxia has always been a very aggressive synergy uh, combo coming online. They can do a lot of work in the early game with Iron Shield Axe if he gets a good blink timing. And it's not as weird as it may seem. You know, he's he's a good blink hero. He can jump in. He does an incredible amount of damage just because of his counter helixes. So he kind of does everything you want from a mid laner. Maybe like with the exception ha of having like insane scaling and um, his early game laning is not as strong in most cases, but I guess this is one of the cases where his laning is actually pretty good. Alright, so um, I imagine that we will see the Jug plus the... Well, Jug plus Ogre top most likely. Um, and the IO plus Legion bottom, the Magnus will be solo against the Axe, which will be fine. The Magnus should be able to get levels and farm, but uh, the like the axe will definitely get free farm because of the spin. As long as there's only one person against him, there's nothing that they can do to stop it. And uh, God of Safe Lane with his Oracle, you know, he'll have a hard time, that's for sure, against that Legion IO and top lane. Darkseid Ricky against the Ogre Magi plus Jug. Like even this lane seems pretty good for Imperial. As um, in most cases, that like that lane matchup is awful. Like wh whatever support hero would be up there would just be bullied and killed over and over again. But it's an Ogre Magi. He is so incredibly tanky that he's probably one of the few heroes who can stand in the lane and still get something done without just you know feeding deaths. And the Jug, you know, spins. So once he has a couple of levels, he will be able to just spin his way victory, and he doesn't have to care too much about the uh, pro the game. He will pick up a man go for himself and that's pretty much just because if you have a manco you secure yourself to have like at least three spins in the laning in the laning stage and um, if you don't have a manco it's like one spin and then you have to wait a little bit for another spin but if you always have that backup manco you can you can go for those spins and spins is how he wins it will not necessarily wins the lanes but it's how he stays in the lane against the dogs here and let's see smoke out of the base trying to find whatever they can Trying to get some wards down. We do have in the bottom end a very, very deep laning ward coming out from Proto Gaming, and uh, at the same time, Imperial warding in the jungle. Just a casual, very common ward coming out. And uh, yeah, Proto Gaming, they show themselves in the bottom area. The axe will show that he's indeed the mid boy, so there's no like morphling mid or something weird like that. It should be pretty obvious, anyways. Um, and yeah, Let's see what else happens. I guess you could have also sent the axe safely against the legion and then have the morphling mid, but I think the morphling doesn't have the best time against the Magnus honestly in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Um, it's it's it, it can be a little bit of a struggle to to an extent, just because the Magnus does so much damage. You know, quelling blade plus empower that's a a little bit more damage than the morphling can deal with when it comes to like denying and last hitting in general. Especially after the nerf on him, he does have his uh, his uh, morph strength. He has morphed completely into agility, so he's only setting up 54 damage, um, less than the legion. So the legion should be able to outlast hit him. His attack animation is all pretty decent. The IO is actually going to start off in the top lane of all things, so he will be healing up the juggernaut, keeping him safe, making sure that he has that spin available at all times. The yoga matter will sit mid or at least he did for a second and he now go bottom he will be the one helping the legion so they want the big boys the two big guns to be in the bottom lane and create that pressure onto the morphling oracle and with the yoga magi here even scaling up the bloodlust first just making sure the legion has uh, the easiest time of his life on the top lane we do have this thing coming up doing a little bit of damage onto the ricky as well as the darks here and now the ricky turns around double iron shield comes out triple iron shield actually has a creep there with one as well but they don't really take too much damage 
I say Ace will be fine, he just used a spin, and with the IO in this lane, it means that the, like it will be a lot easier to just stay with that spin in what's called mana available. Autumn can come with me, TP's down here, he's trying to get something done. Iron Shell is still available, and maybe able to get that first blood going, but his run, he's still very tanky. He's not gonna drop down just like that, as the Iron Shell will now end in a couple of seconds, or well, in 10 seconds time. No, does take a lot of harassment though, and come with me, he doesn't care, he's just gonna keep on fighting. Alright, this is looking a little bit difficult. Both of these heroes just take so much damage. None of them have healing cells available, so this like Angel TP rotation has paid off so well for the side of Proto Gaming as these three heroes, you know, that burned through pretty much all of the regions to stay alive. Like Hester was actually making a rotation back to the base. He's only level one. He hasn't gotten to level two yet. He will buy himself as Ogre Magi, or maybe just as a sustained tool and Noya. He may be taken down here again as, as the smoke screen comes out, and indeed, first blood will go to the side of Proto Gaming as Imperial lose their Ogre in this in this try versus two lane. Top lane with the other darks here, getting a little bit of farm for himself. Not having free farm, but he's level two, almost level three. He does have a surge available. He will go for the surge. The spin will do some damage him but not enough as that little you know the tether thing didn't end up slowing them too much and now ace ooh, be careful 30 hp you know he has a cell but he almost ended up dying there same thing for the io yes. and we do have the dogs he's just denying himself getting back to the base as fast as possible he's level two he can tp back in he has the recipe for the soul ring available so you can buy it in the secret shop once he has enough gold for it uh, meaning that, you know, he knows this is going to be a pretty easy lane from now on up, as uh, as long as he has a search available, there's no way they can kill him, because who's going to stop him from moving, you know? They, they don't have silences, they don't have stunners, as long as the ogre is not here. We do have the Ricky here as well, just trying to annoy the IR a little bit, making sure that this pull does not come through. And... Yeah, come with me. We'll stay up top. Just put some pressure on the IO, and as long as as long as he's here, the IO feels a little bit um, resistant about being aggressive. The dark team will be level three now, so once once he's like level five or level seven, the damage output starts being a little bit better. We do have the sentry being spotted out, well being put down at least by the IO. He has another sentry available, so they need to be a little bit careful. The I the Ricky may be in danger here. They do have the spin available, but the, he goes out of that uh, sentry ring, so they don't feel like going on him. And yeah. This is where they will deny, deny the, the ward, and indeed, they will take it away. There's another tank available, they have one more tank here on the IO, so you can still probably eat it, but it's about eating it without losing your own sentry. Looks like he's going in, he's trying to get it away, looks like he will do that though. And indeed, he just eats it, so the sentry goes back up, Ace will be dropping down in the meantime, so Ryze focusing a little bit too much on removing the sentry, I'm even focusing a little bit too much and just watching him remove it, and uh, he, he ends up losing his safe lane carry, he didn't even tether to him, didn't try to heal him back up, and you know... Uh, but 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 guys, I I got sentry. I removed sentry. I did good. That's pretty much the the kind of thought that must be going through his head right now. Either way, as it as we have the Magnus in the mid lane leading, actually substantially. You know, seven lasses ahead of the axe. The axe is not having the best time of his life. As baby Knight, he's getting a lot out of this lane, and uh, he's most likely going for this like greedy ish build, going for an echo save at some point in a, a, in time, and just trying to do whatever he wants to. Bottom lane, we do have the Legion Commander having equal lasses to the darks here, but. The pressure is not really happening as Morphling has 20 last hits, whereas the Jerk has 10. So uh, he's definitely doing a lot better. Guy has level 2 purifying flame, so it's not enough to just instantly get a kill like that. And yeah, let's see, come with me. 
moving his mate way to the mid lane now as baby and i could use a little bit of harassment as well but i'm not sure the axe can actually do anything about him yeah sure he almost has his vanguard which is going to be his first item once he has that it's going to be a lot easier to stay in the lane at the very least and let's see the lead so far 1500 gold in favor of proto the gaming Alright, alright, alright. So let's take a look at the net rate. Oh, that's the cheap here. Not, in, not, uh, not that uh, impressive to watch. We do have the Magnus in the full lead, but we only go with the Morphling and the Darkseid is following him up. So overall, Proto Gaming, they have a lot of the heroes like on the top list when it comes to net worth. It's only the Baby Knight Magnus who's doing very well. And it's okay to an extent though, because Baby Knight will be able to amplify the damage that the others have, but now in the mid lane he may be a little bit in trouble. Song should come online. Baby Knight, with a couple of spins come in, they drag him back into the smoke cloud they're trying to keep him there, as uh, this double damage come with me is harassing him quite well, but they don't bring him uh, low enough to actually get that dunk off, and obviously they do not want to go into tower range, because then suddenly the Baby Knight just goes for the RP, goes for the skewer, sets up for some TP rotations, and that's the last thing that Crew Dota Gaming wants right now, they do not want to let the TP rotations be their death, and now rise, Baby dropping down here, gets the tether away, as there's not enough mana to actually get that smoke cloud off, he needed like 5 more mana, a little bit unfortunate but uh, lucky for the IO. Alright, and here we have the Vanguard coming online from Axe. He is level 7, almost level 8. As so he's having an okay time in this mid lane position. The blank should come online at a pretty good rate. You know, probably like 10 to 12 minutes, somewhere in between that, will be the blink timing. And on off lane Axe, it's like a perfect timing. From mid Axe, I guess it's like, you know, it's what you want, it's what you expect because um, you know you, you you need to get a good amount of farm um however he will get a blink at the very least at the same time as magnus has one um maybe even before depending on whether or not magnus decides to go for that echo saber that uh, a lot of the magnus mid players like to go for we are for example you're the dark scene nice rp skew into rp get him maybe a little bit in trouble he will be taking down some nice he could work rotation from baby knight just grants them a nice little kill and obviously early on rp is just to get to get one pick off, you just want one core pick off, and then you're fine with how you use the RP. You go in, you go in. He also used the empower on the jump, so he will be able to farm a little bit better for the next like 30 40 seconds. Alrighty, so let's see. We do have come with me spawning out these rotations as they rise when that water they did see it happening as well, so they know this is this is water and they will be able to take it away. I, I don't know if uh, does he have, no he doesn't have any sentries available, but the second he has them he will just go up and take them away. Oracle doesn't have any sentries on him either, so it will take a little while until they ferry some sentries to themselves. We do have that axe solution doing some work as well as, <laughs> you know, efficient farming. Farming uh, multiple camps for that illusion, just you know, sitting in there letting the spin do the work. The illusion rune from a fun axe with Vanguard is actually such an amazing rune, you get so much farm from it. You can pretty much clear two waves in most cases, depending on how many times you spin, you can clear two waves. You can see. Um, he's you know almost clearing that second one. This one will not actually be clearing another one because he doesn't actually micro it. But uh penguin sec, you know. That's a little bit of uh, farm amplification, he's ahead of the Magnus now. We do see the come with me just flanking himself away as he was uh, fearing for his life. The Sandy Dust are available, there's Dust on the hour. they did also go for that Dust, they have another Dust on the Ogre Matcha as well, so they are trying to just keep track of, of come with me. And in the back lines, another Dust comes out, come with me, will be gone on Blink Strike, comes out, and that's just, you know, more resources wasted, I guess. That's one way to look at it at least. I mean, I guess for support hero this early in the game, it's actually a little bit annoying to keep bidding dust without getting kills because it is 90 gold. Like, you know, it, it, to, twice it's 180. If you use it four times, suddenly it's your boots that's going. And, uh, you know, it could have been items that you really want to have. Ricky even has like almost a completed um, face boot with his Blightstone Orb of Venom Matrix stick. So he's doing pretty nicely for Ricky. He's level 4, almost level 5. Level wise, he's doing fine. The Arrow is level 5 himself, and the Ogre is level 5. So Imperial, they have the levels and the supports, they just also want the farm. The Ogre Magic is not even skilling up the Ignite this game, as um, 
There's the purge from the Oracle, so this is pretty much the only reason. Uh, the purge and the phase E just makes it pretty much impossible to do anything with it anyways. Um, you can dodge it with the waveform as well, you can dodge it with a blink from the axe when he gets that. So it doesn't really make sense going for the ignite this game and you know, max bloodlust is a little bit better because you at least always have some security for the max bloodlust, you will always be able to do Thing. And think about it, you know, when he's level 7, he has a uh, maxed out bloodlust with uh, the empower from the Magnus. He will be able to farm at a stupid rate on this Juggernaut. Like, it will be insane. Should be pretty interesting to see how fast he gets his items. Um, he has been shut down in the lane so far, though, so he definitely does need that uh, that impact. And while well, I'll say this, top level do thing is like moving in with that lane, getting the first kill, maybe getting the secondary one, gets another dunk onto the owl. The owl gets taken down. Baby Nut is in the lane, he does have his up here available, do have a duel. Off cooldown, but not enough mana to use it. Just two mana short before Hezzy Run could have gone that duel off, and Penguin Sex should be fine here. There's coming a skew out into RP potentially. As Baby Knight, we will be fine. Those people making a rotation in with that false promise available as well. Baby Knight gets, gets controlled up, and he will be held in place. One more spin is going to be enough, but they have to commit a little bit too far to actually get that. Come with me, we'll make the final top of moves. Maybe Baby Knight rotates around, maybe he goes back in. Looks like he will just be healed up by the aisle, so everything will be fine. Still two kills going to the side of Proto Auto Gaming without anything happening from Imperial, they lose Ace again. And okay, Ricky will be fortune send it up, Ace, he's in a cloud that he cannot get out of, he cannot go for the spin, he will be taken down, as that purifying flame get got out just before he could use a spin, and he ends up dropping down. So another death on this Juggernaut from Ace, and he's just being shut down completely because of this. 3500 gold, the Morphling is free farming in the bottom in Gala, now he's sitting on almost um, a full Lincoln Sphere, he only needs the recipe now, which is 1000 gold, and that only takes a couple of minutes to complete, so there's going to be a 15-16 minute Lincoln Sphere time. Um, without threats, sure. So it's not like a, f a fully perfect one, but it's a good. It's a good one. All right, the axe is farming ancients now, so you know more farm going his way. The blade mail should come online at pretty much like 14 minutes into the game, something like that. As a blink, blade, blink vanguard blade mail at 14 minutes into the game, this guy is going to be able to get kills on pretty much anyone. Baby Nut has his blink now as well, but the second item is going to take him a little while to complete because of the simple thing that he doesn't have an Echo Saber, the first item, and the Echo Saber is like the only item that actually makes him able to farm very fast. And without that, his farm rate is pretty low, and uh, as you can see, he's even giving the stacks to the Jug, as uh, the Jug definitely needs farm, he's letting him have them, and you know, Ace. Him getting a lot of farm is definitely going to be important. Whereas Baby Knight, you know, he has his blink, and that's that's enough to at least do his work. He can do what he's supposed to this game. He can go around, he can use his empower, he can use his RP. And whereas Ace, if he doesn't get farm, you know, who's gonna do the damage in the end? Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. You see the Legion? Still a very very long away long time away from that blink as well, twelve hundred gold to go. And there's nothing he can really, you know, farm easily to be able to get it as the tower the, there's only like one creep where he's pushed pretty far in towards him. He can start pushing it out, but then he just risks getting jumped on and in the meantime we do a prototype gaming, making a rotation with the Morphling of all things, so this is a little bit unexpected probably, and it may lead into some kills as Penguin Seg with the waveform follow from the, the Garda should be able to get something good. And with me will be spotted up. As they do go for that scan, and Hester Run will probably just stay, stay very, very far back. The Morphling will start pushing the mid tower, and the top tier 1 tower will be pushed in from A's in the meantime. As maybe we have a TP coming in, Penguin Sec does have a TP ready, and we do have the Come With Me coming in as well, so we may see some kind of rotation coming from tower falls down if they want to defend it. Does he? Penguin? Does he TP up? Yep, indeed he does, and Ace will make his way back. As uh, they know, this could be a little bit dangerous. We do have the Morphling coming up with his replicate as well. They want to take this fight, but is it going to be worth it? Alright, looks like that at least give a little bit of space for Hesio to finish his blink in the bottom lane. He is pushing towards tower. He may be able to do some more damage to the IO coming down towards him as well. We have the Baby Knight Magnus moving down as well. So it looks like they are trying to commit for this tower, while uh, Proto the Gaming they commit for the top tier 1 tower. Ace will push the mid lane as well. And his first item will be coming online soon. I don't think there's any chance that he goes for Battle Fury because that's, that's a weird item to get. Um, considering the fact that you know you have empower, so you have like a built-in uh, battle for you this game anyway. So we'll probably just go for the Yasha Manta into the future play kind of style, and we'll see. 
what item he will go for first. He did just Radiant's use his spin though, so maybe they can make some kind of jump on him. He's trying to push in. Come with me, does have a smoke out available. Let's see if he can get it off. As we do have Kefka moving in. Spin on the on for two more seconds. Can they do it? They get the jump. He goes for the spin. He doesn't have a TP available though. He will be blocked up as well. And Ace. Oh, he's trying to cut his way through the trees, but it's not really working out. He will be taken down as he was once again a little bit too aggressive. And, you know, pushing the tower is usually fine, but you're against an axe, so you need to be careful with the blink calls, and you don't have a TP, so you can't even spin TP against, well, everyone else. Also a little bit unfortunate as Ace will now have, what, four deaths to his name? Not really the greatest performance in his, uh, in his history, I guess. Axe illusions. Oh, well, you know, axe replicate illusions also being very great. That's another part that makes it nice to have a an axe on your team, even if it is in the middle position. You have a morphling, so he can just steal the replicates, he can farm with them, and he can get a little bit more farm going his way. He does have his thing as he completed. He has 1600 gold on top of that, so he could get a pretty decent timing on that if you're a bit depending on what he wants to go for first. I believe. With the brown boots still being up, I think he's going for travel boots. Maybe he goes forward before the Ethereal Blade as well. Um, like we saw in the first game happening from Ace. See though? Ace and Hestro, they're both farming up, you know, bloodlust in power. These two heroes just, you know, hitting creeps like like madmen is uh, pretty interesting to watch. We do have Garda in position. They do have the duel available. This could be a little bit scary. Depending on, uh, you know, is, is it a bait? Is it not a bait? Who knows? As we did have Penguin Sick in position with the rest of the team, he does have his blade mill up, so he's definitely wanting to take whatever fight he can grab. And yeah, in the meantime, the Ricky slowly scaling further towards his, uh, you know, semi carry position. He has his face boots, so he just needs something like a. Uh, he has an urn as well now, which is nice, you know, that's the supportive item. Probably the only one he will get, maybe the drums as well, and then he goes for the diffusion blade. Um, I guess this game. Drums is pretty nice, just so you get some more tankiness. And let's see the other here's mechanism is up on the docks here. So uh, they have that healing. The Magnus is getting close towards that Echo Saber, as he only needs 300 more gold. Once he has that, he will be able to farm pretty much as fast as the Axe and, you know, catch up slowly. So that's going to be pretty nice for him. Um, and obviously, Hester Joe is actually, well, you know, slowly moving up towards Darks in the farm list and the Juggernaut is also trying to follow up with the Morphling. The Empower is helping all three heroes to just keep on scaling, keep on farming, but they all, they, they're they pretty far behind, so even though the Empower makes them able to farm a lot faster than normally, it may not be enough. Did you find come with me here though? Then maybe I'll get a kill on him, and yeah, it looks like he will indeed be taken down, as maybe not even just, you know, Rhinoceros charge into his face, gets a kill on him, and uh, that will be the end of that. Nice little pick up on come with me. Looks like Garda didn't really want to go for the Trail Boots in the end, he decides to go for the Ethereal Blade Rush, as uh, that should be an interesting item to have. You know, the, the earlier the better, right? It's not as, ma as amazing against the Jug, unless you can use it after he uses the spin, but you can kill the Magnus, you can kill the Legion, you know, all of these heroes is worth killing anyways. You see, Penguin has his Trail Boots as well now, and the Replicate of the Axe comes out as a, you know, that will make him able to farm aggressively with the Replicate, just pushing the lanes um, as much as he wants to. Penguin is continuing to just keep getting that ancient farm. You know, it is a very efficient way of farming, and he's been pretty much sitting around this area farming for the whole game, whereas the rest of the map is being given to the Morphling as well as whoever else is in the area. You know, the Dubsy can jump as well. He does have his Arcane Boots, he almost has enough gold to go for the Blink as well, so everyone on the side of Proto Gaming is scaling nicely. But, you know, both teams, they're pretty much just trying to farm up and scale. Proto Gaming, they are losing a little bit of their lead, so they need to be careful. Giving too much uh, space and time for Imperial to catch up.
again come with me, get down done, get found. They can't actually get the dual off because of the smoke cloud they're trying to get it off. Let's see if they can indeed get it. Nope, come with me. Okay, they just nuke him. They do get the kill at least, but sadly they could not get the deal on the Hestro run. That would have been the first duel of the game, 20 minutes into the game. You know, it's about the time where you really want to start getting duels. You have level 2 duel, you still don't have any extra damage, but at least they keep on killing this uh, this Ricky. That is the same time he goes into his own death, and you know, as long as that continues, that's fine. You have, let's see, where's the empower machine? Where's my empower? Our uh, ace, you know, he's like, I don't have empower, I guess. I mean, I'm clearing this camp very, very quickly. What are you doing? Magnus is up in the top lane with his Echo Saber, ready to get something going. He does have 1k gold on top of that. Probably something like a Shadow Blade 4 star will be the follow up. Just going for the standard, you know, initiation items, um, like the Trifecta, Blink Force, um, Shadow Blade, maybe even an Eel Soda on top of that um, could be happening. We'll see. Amazing kill guys. Alright, God, he he he, he 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 goes to his replicate now. I'm not sure why that is. I don't think I don't know if you actually get dual damage from winning that bull onto the illusion. If that was the case, then you know sure. But I guess you know he just wanted to go to the mid lane anyways from God. You know he wanted to join his team, so he just replicated in and said, "Hey, you just waste the deal. Jokes on you." Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Alright, Pink Wednesday goes with Playboy, jumps onto it, he's dropping very, very low, relocate will be keeping him alive for the time being, oh, that hit almost killed him, in the meantime though, Baby Knight will be taken down, didn't get, also got to his RP as well as the false took away the sun from Pink Wednesday, so that is RP gone, they almost lost ace they have used to relocate two very very big cooldown spells in the early game and they didn't like anything they didn't they didn't even save everyone as baby knight is dead now sure he uh, what's it called the wall got used from the dark here as well but that's a very small thing to use now they're going higher ground they're trying to just pressure as much as they can while baby knight is gone for 30 seconds and let's see how much damage they can do the tier 3 is dropping very very low the blood loss is keeping it pretty strong but penguin saying he's such a manly hero at this point you know he's Play mill vanguard, you know, almost a complete BKB. There's nothing that kills this guy, Gotta. Takes a lot of damage here. Duel. Almost attempted as both heroes just, you know, pop blade mills on each other as uh, Penguin Seg, Penguin Seg, you know, popping his blade mill, getting an iron shell on him. He was like, you what? Fight me. Fight me. It's the puppy face coming out from, uh, from Penguin right there. Just, you know, yeah, let's go, man. I'm ready for it. Alright, let's see, so the mob thing does have his ethereal blade now, and that means his damage output will be crazy, he has 1k gold on top of that, most likely will just go for the trail boost as the next, like, the next item as the uh, ground boost for too long is always a very very weird decision. The axe will have that BKP online soonish as well. The Oracle is uh, probably going for something like an Aelon, so you can always use those false promises. The Ricky is trying to get that Diffusional Blade as the next thing. Blink mechanism on the Darkseer as well. Uh, some problem with the outcome with me being spun up. That may be the first rule, indeed they do get it, and finally they get a deal victory on Hesteron. Look how happy he is, you know, he's a, he's a big boy with that blood loss and finally gets some more damage on him. And that is, once again, come with me dropping down. Third time he dies, he's had a good game so far, but I just thought he keeps on getting picked up. Now go for the gaming, trying to pick up that Roshan. Yeah, uh, just using that Lucy to tank it up. And for those that do not know, um, most of you are like, oh, how is the Lucy still alive? But the thing is, if you don't hit with the, if you don't use the Lucy to hit the Rosh, it doesn't die. They only die if you actually hit the, hit the Roshan with the Lucy. They can still tank. Alright, so we got the army test coming up. Not grabbing any kills so far. We have the skill coming up, Gala dropping very very low, Full Force will be keeping him alive, he did still get stunned after the after it though, he will be able to hide and staying alive, Go see that the strike survived, uh, by a you know small amount, the Ogre Magic is the one dropping down, as in they will just back themselves up, Omni Slash and cooldown now, Blink was the next item from Ace, if he just wanted to go into those Blink, um, Omni Slash is Baby Knight, used his RP as well, and they once again really managed to win that team fight. and if they can't win a team fight using every single ultimate they have, then what is the further into the game, you know? That's that's kind of the, the thing you need to keep in mind. I'm um, sure they will scale further. The Dragonaut will be scarier and scarier as the time goes on, especially when he gets a Diffusial Blade. Uh, but he needs to get it first. That's uh, 3,000 gold away. Alright, um... That's a full five-man disappearance coming out. As a... 
the post comes online, pro the gaming, they all disconnect. I'm not sure if they're like, uh, I, I guess they may be in a team house together or something like that. Um, considering that they all disconnected at the same time, but um, hey, I guess that happens. So uh, so uh, now pro the gaming is dead for, for the time being. Right, they need a second, but either way, they will be coming back slowly. 10,000 net worth lead is what we are nearing for the side of Proto the Gaming. And uh, as we talked about, you know, the items are flowing out. The Axe will have that BKB next time. They tried to finish up that Roshan, but they got interrupted. And I imagine they will not go back for it just, just, just within the next couple of minutes as the Axe is low in mana. Sure, the Morphling can fight. Maybe if it goes pick off in the mid lane, if he can get a jump onto Ace. Ace could be a juicy one. He smokes up, comes up. Oh, and that was right, kid, but not with the ethereal blade, he did not get that shot off, so it was close, but not close enough. Um, AC ended up surviving fairly. Has run, bottom lane, you know, going in, he does have that blade mill ready. It has been doing him some, some work so far, but he's still only on one duel victory, and that duel victory was what, a full like, clown first jump on to co come with me, where they just, you know, said, okay, let's throw our bodies, that's a little wiki, and then uh, make sure that this time he ends up dying. Alright, then Magnus is going for the Shadow Blade next, he does have a Claymore on him, so that will be the next go-to mission, and once again Proto came with the R in the pit, trying to finish it up, and God of will be the one picking it up, he has almost enough gold to go for that, those Shadow Boots, like I talked about, maybe he goes for the Manticore first, but considering, I don't know, that's, it's pretty much the one, so I guess you can read the boost of speed, or the, have the boost of speed only, for a little while longer, but it always just looks so weird, like, if, if you want to keep it for the so long, that you get like a mantis tile as well, then you might as well just go for the trap and then sell them later. And indeed, he does go for the travel boots, so he does have that you know late game TP boots available, and he can move around on the map a little bit split pushy as well. Very fast now, and you know he can go for it. He he has a lot of armies. He's the top net worth here in the game, um, only maybe you know by a small amount as the axe is just behind of him. He does have his completed BKB as well now and with that Aegis available they may be able to go by and this RP gets used in the top end. Come with me. Almost survives but just not close enough. Oh well. I uh, almost survives. I guess he was going to die either way. But in the meantime bottom name Penguin said gotta jump onto the Legion and that will be a one for one trade. The Legion traded for the Ricky. I think they will trade that nicely especially considering the effort they have to use. You know they have to use the RP to get the kill. Come with me. Whereas Proto Gaming, you know, Blink Tone, that's not a lot of commitment. You don't you don't have big cooldowns, you know, sure, it's easy. Now do a penguin sec, TP into the top lane, he may be trying to set up for something. As he goes in, he keeps the tower safe, and it will be a one tower trade for nothing. As uh, the tier one, tier two tower on the top lane will not be taken down from Proto Gaming and the tier two bottom may be taken down, Gata. Has a couple more seconds left on that replicate. He can't throw forward, he will just move himself away. Okay, skewer comes out. <laughs> AP nice. Please. I looked a little bit clowny. <laughs> Alright, so apart from a weird skewer that was a uh, interesting Penguin Seg without the EKB coming to join his team as uh, you know he just wanted to defend the bottom uh, the top lane sorry for a little bit and now C2 is finally down. They can make a rotation to the mid lane if they want to, but I imagine that Proto Gaming is feeling pretty comfortable in trying to go a bit aggressive, maybe just go going for the high ground. Looks like the top lane will be pushed out. The Scarlet will go up here, just have a replicate to go back in towards the axe though. And uh, yeah, we'll see. As uh, if they can get that tier 2 tower, it would be great as well. They do still have about 3 minutes left on the ages, so there's not really any like huge rush trying to go for the high ground, especially because going high ground like with just ethereal blade lingans maybe a little bit too early for a thing in most cases you, you kind of want to have one or two more items before you commit um so unless the axe gets like a godly pick off they, they will most likely not do that blink now completely on the thing as well as he wants to go for those like blink blow ups on 
Kira's like the IO in the back line, so it's a very e easy hero to kill the Ethereal Blade Adapter Strike, and he's an important hero, you know, if he doesn't die, he can keep most people alive. Ace now has a Diffusial Blade as well on the Jug, so his damage is slowly becoming more relevant, and uh, you know, the Diffusial Manta in power, he can definitely do his uh, his own share of damage. We do have a two-man smoke gang coming up from the side of Imperial, trying to find something in the Radiant Jungle perhaps, but, you know, is there anything to find is the question. So yeah, let's see, top tier to tell, finally gone, Imperial, they have only their high, their high ground left to defend, we do have the, the Morphling here with his team trying to push in, 1k gold on him as well, so next item, next item, next item, TP back from the Legion Commander, he's trying to go for that, uh, Vladimir, he will buy it out, and uh, he will have it on him, so he is going for the same as we saw in the first game, the Blink, Blade Mill, Vlad's, Skullcrass will be the next go to item, and we'll see bottom main, Io with the job. Keeping the jug safe when he's farming this aggressively, but uh, while this is happening, Proto the Gaming, they're in, they're looking for something, they will go towards trying to find Ace, Ace will get the blink away, will TP himself home, and so will Rise. so none of these two players will drop down, as uh, they, they read the situation well, they know that something is happening, the Penguin Sick is hunting for them, but no one will be caught. It looks like um, looks like Proto Gaming have been pretty content with what they've gotten out of uh, with the ages. Obviously, will run out in, in in a minute's time, maybe a little bit less. Um, they will probably pick up a gem off of that, try to get some more control of the enemy's woods, get some vision under their control. The Ricky will finish up his Diffusal Blade. The Darkseer has a 4 staff not completed, so the first 4 staff on that team. The Axe is probably going for something like a Shiva Scout as the next item, just you know, a big item that can do a lot of work. A um, high impact item off all. Maybe an assault crest could also be a play, but it's it's a little bit more unusual at at, at the very least. And uh, Morphling indeed, Aegis is gone, so he needs to be a little bit more careful now. But with the, with the false promise behind him, he can actually go high ground even playing up against the Magnus, because obviously, if the Oracle is not hit by the RP, then you know false promise RP gone. And Gala goes into the mid lane. He starts his work on the high ground, and the range strike will be the first thing he starts hitting. He's doing a little bit of damage, just trying to poke those TPs back to the base. And he sees the Ace coming back in, and he says that is enough. Now some of you will be a in trouble. We'll be taken into the base. Duel will be won by Hesterodon as they fight another duel. And you know, two duels this game, both of them come with me, and every single RP seems to be used on this Ricky as well. There's definitely some hate for this player, um, or just you know, hate for Ricky um, as a whole, I guess. Alright, so the Darkseid Guardian Keys, 4 star complete, next item could be, could be something like a Lotus Orb as well, as uh, there's not a lot of single target spells on the side of Imperial, but there's some, you know, you can take away the Ignite, you can reflect the deal back, how silly that, that, that must sound, you know, um, the stun from the Ogre Magic can be reflected back, and you know, you can take away debuffs if that, if that ever happens, for example, the Diffusal Blade if you use the Purge effect, um, Omni Slash can be reflected as well, so you know, those are some things that make the Lotus Orb nice, and Double Shiva Scott may sometimes be too much, as Penguin Sick is already making his way towards one, uh, with that Plate Mill being completed, it can work if they just want, you know, heavy damage, but uh, it, it seems weird in most cases. They could go for Soulcrest on the Axe and Shivas on the Darkseid, I guess. That, that would maybe make a little bit more sense. Wait, what? Oh, the, the replicate got skewed. I was like, what happened? Oh, Penguin Snake gets a jump in. Gets a jump onto Baby Knight. Baby Knight has five back available. He may have to use it. He has to do another play being used by Hestia. Not able to get that blink in. And that's a pretty big pick off. As the 60 seconds without Babynet on that Magnus battle, we're going to try and take those rings back down. 
and then he is getting them done slowly but surely Metarise will be next he's still staying he's doing the work he's doing the damage will take himself away just making sure that no one goes on him duel can be coming out from minister run he gets the duel in we do have the system uh, staying alive for the time being will be out beat up will be taken down but the legion is dropping down and that's the five that committed from the side of imperial they get the wiki as well with the omni slash dogs he gets taken down outside the crucial blade is on point and that is sweet down inside of the game they have to get the others out as if they lose more that could be a little bit big Oh, yeah, the Ghana goes in the back and tries to, try to get a jump onto the IO, but at what cost he ends up dropping down as they get a kill on him. He gets a trash for a very, very greedy pickoff, loses his life. We do have the Kingdom Tech going in, not finding anything either. As he ends up dropping down himself. All five men team up inside of Proto Gaming, as that is 4,500 gold going in the pockets of Proto of Imperial. As Proto Gaming, they just. Radiant's get overwhelmed that was interesting you know the Radiant buyback four star sure that's great from from the magnus they even got a pick off on the legion when he went in Radiant's that was pretty much a trade-off you know they lost two heroes and then Radiant's they got the legion killed but in the end you know, morphling goes in for greedy pickoffs ends up dying for it axe tries to go for greedy pickoffs ends up dying for it and that, that's that's just too much man that's too much give away now suddenly the jock is the top spawn here on the map four thousand gold on him with the helmet dominator already purchased he can go for something like a butterfly very soon and the Legion Commander is slowly becoming more relevant as well. They need to be careful doing this. This is pretty much what happened in the first game from Proto Gaming where they had a huge lead, you know, 12,000 network lead, and then suddenly they just throw it away. And they need to not do that. Obviously, that late game is very, very strong. It's hard to expect Imperial to do insane work late game. I mean, the heroes don't do too, don't deal too well with the Morphling, apart from the fact that they can just, you know, combo, wombo, combo him, and then they can kill him doing that. Um, so, I don't know. It's going to be a hard game for Imperial later on, but they do have what it takes to get kills either way because later on, you know, if, if they have a good RP, they will always be able to get kills. Um, so you like we you can discuss about who has a better late game team, I guess, but um, as long as the RP is on point, um, Imperial will at least always be able to get kills. And same thing for Proto Gaming, if they get like a good um, call from the Axe, they will easily get kills themselves. Smoke Gang coming up from the side of Proto Gaming, not catching anything Radiant's so far. Counter Smoke tower. coming up from attack. Imperial, as they're looking for the far fight themselves, coming with me will be the one in the front lines, spotting out something. It looks like Imperial, they're holding their ground just a little bit, maybe waiting a little bit longer. Garda will be in the front, they do expect this to be happening. Gotta walks in, links himself away. Will be fine for now. He comes out on the penguin that he will be called from himself. Nice back him into roll. This is two people alive. They've been dropping very, very low. He will get the RP off though. And now Ace goes in. Starts the work. Good RP. Gotta drop the very, very low. Will get the red, will get the replicate away. Will survive for the time being. Two for two trades so far. Penguin Tech will get a kill off to the Magnus as well. There's only the Jug and the IO left alive. Come with me. We'll get himself out of there as well. We'll do the gem on the dragon to come with me. Very, very low. Diffusal on diffusal action. Come with me, ends up dying. And uh, yeah, that will be the end of it. 3 for 3 trade will be the final score. Slightly better fight for the side of Proto Gaming. They're still ahead, so you may say, you know, it's, it's, it's okay for Imperial. But they lose two calls, one support on Imperial side. And Proto Gaming, they lose two supports in one call. I don't know if. Was that that gem? Oh, that was Imperial's gem, so it's like being made a gem trade off either. Alrighty, so you know, Juggernaut Satanic has been picked up by him. Interesting itemization, but I guess it makes sense because apart from the call, they don't actually have any way to stop him from hitting. You know, they, they can't control him, they can't stop him from using items or whatever. So, Satanic plus a potential MKB, so you don't care about the smoke either. That makes him, uh, that makes him pretty scary because uh, that 2.3k HP usually will be enough to keep him alive against the Blade Mill Axe. And obviously, just e even if you don't get the Satanic off when you get called, the 25% life steal is technically 25% left less damage from the blade mill, so you know. It does make it a little bit more um, survivable going against that blade mill, even though it will hurt more and more as the game goes on either way. The mid lane comes with me getting jumped on, getting jeweled up by Hester One, and that will be another pick up on Total of the Gaming as Legion gets another one. You know, come with me is going to be the uh, impossible to empty dual damage pool of love from Hester One as uh, he's, uh, he, he's loving this guy so far. 
How many times have they died this game? Eight times though. Come with me. You need to be a little bit more careful going for these aggressive plays. It is kind of what you do as a rig, you know. You're, you're the one creating vision, and sometimes you die, sometimes you don't. In the back manager, we do have also, uh, we do have an RP coming up. We pretty well on to the road that I gave him. He's very low. He may be making him alive, but I'm not too sure. Looks like he will be surviving for the time being. Baby Man is now dead. Penguin's egg dropping very low though as Ace, he's just mauling him down. We do have the more things all already just you know replicating himself out of there as he was dropping over too low. Then to run in the backlands going in, popping the Lincolns here. Obviously, you know, Duel doesn't really do too much else, and Garda will just get the blink away. Both good fight to the side of Imperial as once again Morphling, you know, he survives, but they, they can't really fight. Like the Morphling is not able to fight up against the Terminal right now. The Terminal is just too strong. If not as a hero itself, but because you have like you have a Vladimir Sora, you have a Mechanism more, you have Bloodlust, you have the Empower, like Ace has everything that makes this guy strong. Get the butterfly now completed as well, so hitting him will be next impossible for Morphling. And with that Scotty being his uh, like first you know, next big item. And again, another one getting picked off. We do have Garda going in, getting a pick off onto the IO. So at least he, you know, trade they trade heads as Legion got the kill onto the Dark Sea and uh, yeah, I got killed by the Morphling. The Roshan may be taken down here though, Come with me goes in. Too greedy though, as he will be taken down. Another two of the going to the side of Imperial. As you run, we'll be able to have a No, Garda may be in danger here. Could be slow with the hurtling in a couple of seconds. No, he gets taken before he can blink away. There's no more officials on Ace by the looks of things. As he can just go for the, for the, for the like, good old classic hitting. Garda tries to go for TP away, can they stun him? No, they cannot ask the Lincoln to refresh and he will just blink himself away. That may have given them enough time to go for the first round though, but as I say that Ace and Hesher, they both just blink themselves in there, they both pick it off, they will get the Aegis on Hesher run and there's no cheese obviously, it is the first Roshan I believe of the game. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. All right, so um, so far so good. The network, the which was 12,000 gold in favor of Proto Gaming, has now been nullified as Imperial. They are looking pretty solid at this point. Ace, you know, continuing to get big items. Butterfly, the fusion two completed. Now the next thing is the Moonshot. Then upgrade the trail boots, and then he's six slotted. You know, completely filled up. Uh, the assault caress is not coming online as the next item from Legion. He goes for BKB first, but it's okay. You know, there's a lot of magical damage from Proto Gaming, mainly just because of the Ethereal Blade Adapter Strike from Garda. But that's also enough in 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 so many ways. And uh, the Magnus Silver Edge on him, not anything huge on top of that. Um, but you know, he doesn't really have to be the most farmed here on the map. Um, as long as he can just, you know, get his up piece off, which he has been able to do pretty nicely this game, then uh, everything will be fine. And I imagine next item maybe he may get a BKB on the way, but then it's going to be pretty much, you know, get a refresher up. Man, come with me. He's uh, he's struggling, you know. He does have a diffusal bit, but uh, you know, he keeps on dying every single duel except for one, I believe, that has been won by Legion. Has been come with me, you know, giving him damage. I actually think all of the duels was come with me, so uh, it can be it's, it's not that amazing.
Alright guys, we keep on going, we keep on staying strong as the course is now over and the game will resume. Let's see how Imperial does it as they can go for the smoke gang very very shortly. Um, well, as I say, that's six minutes to go before the next smoke. I don't know if they have a smoke on anyone. Let's see the open right. Yeah, he does have a smoke available. I didn't think that at all. So, they can go for smoke when they want to. Um, they do have the Aegis after all, so they kind of want to use that. Um, at least at some point. And let's see how they do. In the meantime, Proto Gaming, they are keeping themselves on their side of the map. They have a billion sentries on the map as well, as so they haven't decided to go for a gem themselves. They've just been sentrying up the map. Uh, you know, a lot of them around the Roshan area at the very least. And uh, for the time being, they're farming up. The Axe does have the Shivas completed, so he did decide to go for that. And the Dark Seed doesn't have anything shown so far. I didn't kind of expect the Assault Crest then like a Shivas on the Darks here, but I guess, you know, double Shivas is okay as well. At least having one Shivas is pretty important. And let's see, Smoke Gang coming up from the side of Imperial, they're invading the jungle, but there's not really anyone here has come with me, he's all the way down the bottom, and unless they go up towards the Ancients, then they will not be finding anything. They will go this way though, they will find one. Do they think that's going to be the real one? No, it is uh, an illusion, and we do have Proto Gaming just disengaging because of this sad face. He was a little bit confused, but he should know that that was not because he was like here in front of the illusion. The illusion didn't break the smoke, then he moved a little bit further, then it broke, and it was like, uh, is it the real one? But it's like, you know, if it doesn't break when you're next to it, it it's not the real one. So, uh, some uh, some sad, sad confusion from him, obviously not really giving him much to work with. Alright, so Imperial is now in the lead with 2.5k gold, maybe 3,000 gold. We do have Proto Gaming going for Smoke Gang themselves. I'm not sure if that was actually spotted or not. I believe they went for the smoke on the high ground, but this board may have spotted or something. I'm not really sure how exactly that works out. Um, because it's on the high ground, so you know, usually if you, you can like see the edge of the smoke, but if it's on the high ground, I don't think you can. They may know that something is coming up there. Well, so it's for Ace. Get jumped. This guy may be in danger. Rise gets picked off in the background. Not able to get to relocate off. We do have the Omicide coming out from Ace. May be able to get something done. We do have Ace also getting that. Uh, what's it called? Healing down with the Satanic in the Omni Flash. That's where you can interact with that. You can kill a little bit while you're in the Omni Flash. That's a, a pretty funny way of working with it. And now Ace gets gone on. Takes a lot of damage. Gotta do so much work to get the kill off of the Ace. And now Baby Nut picking that up, he off didn't actually get it off, it looks like he will be in trouble, he's trying to get it off, doesn't work, he ends up dying before that happens, Oracle is now the only trade-off that Imperial can actually get, and this is time for the high ground, Ace has no buyback, he went for that purchase onto the bottom flight, having that Ace, uh, having that Ace is on his run, is not really proving useful at this point, Baby Nut goes for the buyback, I go for the buyback, they need to commit for this, but 70 seconds without the joke, they should know soon very well that this is happening, we do have Right in the background, taking a lot of damage, he may be taken down here. King Winsack goes in, gets the Steve's got up, let's get the call off though. In time, Baby Nut tries to get a skewer, but actually just passes through him. We do have it. King Winsack now, another call with King Winsack taking a lot of damage. The Legion is thinking about going in, he's going to go in two seconds. Baby Nut takes a lot of damage, goes back in, back in, not actually fall all the way back. KFK does get fueled up, maybe taken down here, that could be a big, pretty big one. As he survives for the time being, will get the Guiding Breeze up, will survive. Nice call from King Winsack, that's a big one, gets in. Goes for the ogre, gets the Aegis pop onto the Legion as well. Buyback on the jug as he finally got the buyback money he needed to get it off. I'm with me in the background. He picked up the gem and he will be able to disengage himself. In the meantime, Penguin Sick will get the TP out. They get the TF3 tower, they get the Melorax, and suddenly, in, in a matter of no time, Proto Gaming, they're once again in the lead as they force out three buybacks, two on core heroes, Baby Nut as well as the jug. They get a Melorax, they get a TF3 tower, and they lose absolutely nothing. Like, literally nothing was lost. Well, the Oracle to begin with, but I guess that's the equivalent of losing nothing. As a viewer, he's just, he's just a walking false promise, so look at that graph. From being suddenly behind to being yet again ahead by 6,000 gold. The more thing going for that MKB will have it up, uh, well, whenever he wants, he just needs 300 more gold for the buyback as well. He will buy it now. The Axe has 3,000 gold as well, so something like the Crimson Guard could be purchased, unless he wants to replace the Vanguard with an Soulcrass or something equal to that. I guess that is probably the better play. Let's see in the other heroes. We do have the dogs here. 3.5k gold, not really deciding what to go for yet. The, the Ricky has diffusion level 2, has a gem on him. The Jug now purchases another gem for the team. 
no buyback gaming on him and it looks like they may be trying to go for some kind of commitment but uh mechanism on the io the ogre has Edelands plus glimmer they have a gem on the legion he has 2000 gold so he has a decent amount of farm he does have buyback as well but this is looking a little bit tough for imperial all of a sudden as a job without buyback 46 minutes into the game that could just be you know one death and then suddenly the game is over Back in the defensive position with the other tier 3 tower bottom being pushed in with you having to going in, getting the jump on the head. Your head will be taken down in this nice little bit, keeping him alive. We will find it to be taken down as soon as it gets that down off. We will be buying back instantly. Come with me, try to pick up that gem with the whole TP on him. Drop the TP, pick up the gem, got the gem, got up, will now disengage himself. And the gem has been received, the buyback has been pulled up. That given to all comes out, takes the goes into another call. Get a beautiful call. No SS, but. The RP is big, it's big enough, so Penguin Tech both runs, Rookie Mula on the side comes out only on him. That's a lot of damage, he will most likely drop down here. Indeed, he will ace in the back line, he's very far out of the base, they be taken down here. But the Oracle will be taken down by Ace before anything else happens. Ace is trying to disengage himself with the other buyback coming out from Penguin Tech, keeping into the mid lane. Bottom lane, Gala is just going for the ratting, he doesn't care about Ace, he just wants to keep ratting, and Ace is like, oh, is someone chasing me, someone not chasing me. And look at all this damage that's being done to the structures in the meantime. Penguin Tech gets the range back in the top lane, all the racks has not been taken down as short of the game and they have mega creeps all of a sudden how much is that worth and you know is it worth killing that joke i don't think so if you can get all of the racks taken then you are very much better off with that now ace is in the front lines he's only alive with legion so it's two against four how do we do this and now gotta go in almost get the kill on the head joe here will be taken down and no buyback available and this may be the gg as the buyback comes out on oracle as well trying to get back in tp's the tier two tower i'm coming guys slowly slowly but surely and GG will play will be as Imperial. They will lose the game and they will say congratulations. Season 10 will be won by Proto the Gaming. Noia will be taken down. No, not not quite on the on the edge. The verge of it on the end of it, but Proto the Gaming, they do win the series 3 to 1. Amazing series, a lot of comebacks, a lot of you know back and forth gaming, but eventually it is still Proto the Gaming winning and yeah. That's going to be the end guys, I hope you enjoyed the series, I hope you enjoyed the casting as well, there was maybe some hiccups once in a while, but you know, that happens, I hope you enjoyed it overall either way, you're welcome to give me some feedback on my Twitter, um, at MadKingStota, and yeah, you can follow me there as well if you want to, follow